Welcome to Boots in Baltimore. I'm Leanne Blanchard, and I'm here with Dan Harvey, attorney and owner of Cotton Duck Title. So what is title insurance? Title insurance is a product that you're offered when you buy a piece of real estate. And it says that if there's something that has occurred in the chain of title leading up to your taking title, buying the property, Title insurance will identify you, pay off those claims, make sure that your ownership is not disturbed going forward. It's insurance, you know, it's one of those products that you hope you never need. Um, but unlike your car insurance or your uh, home insurance, you only pay for it once when you buy a piece of real estate. And uh, so, yes, we are a title company, we are uh, an agent of a deep pocketed. <laughs> insurance uh, corporation called Old Republic and and uh, so we write the title insurance policies after doing a significant amount of research on each mm -hmm. title so um, I like to tell my clients it's protection to make sure that the people selling you the property actually own what you think you're buying mm -hmm. so, yes and you'd think that'd be obvious you would think that there'd never be um, disputes uh, or sort of buried facts, such as um, somebody got the property out of an estate and the proper uh, people were not notified and you might face a claim in the future. Or um, we look at the judgment records, circuit court, district court, bankruptcy court. Um, we pay off any creditors that are officially out there, but maybe one comes forward in the future and says, yeah, we, we had a case that was working. Maybe it wasn't filed exactly right, but it's, it's a lien against your real estate. Uh, you have 60 days to get out. <laughs> Extremely rare. But these are the types of things that title insurance is there for. It's really peace of mind. And I uh, hope that answered the question. <laughs> it does. So title insurance usually goes along with escrow services. Yeah. They're not the same but often together. Yeah. So what are they? What's the difference? Yeah, almost always uh, together. Um, you bring us a contract. Um, if your buyer is getting a loan, then your buyer's lender is going to insist that we guarantee um, their loan with title insurance. So we're always going to offer it to your buyer as well. Um, so in ordinary retail sales, it's always part of the mix. And escrow services, I think, are synonymous with settlement services, um, which is what we do. Um, you know, they include getting that contract, reaching out to lenders, realtors, buyers and sellers, anybody else that's involved, and eventually, hopefully, getting them right here uh, to the table to pass around papers and transfer money for <laughs> property rights. Yeah. <laughs> signify the keys for sure because yes. it's it's too too much money too big too important to just write a check and trust me it's in the mail right you gotta make sure it's all together let me tell you <laughs> escrow services involve a lot of money and that's why there's a lot of regulations and formality about it um, and fraud is rampant in checks and wiring and other matters. And we as a title company are on top of all those issues. We offer you things like encrypted, you know, emails in a, in a, in a settlement software program called Qualia, which is cutting edge. And I think it's very important to um, buyers and sellers in the marketplace. Uh, but yeah, escrow services. I think the only time I can think of when title insurance is not typically offered is when People come to us and say, hey, I just need a deed um, uh, adding my children to the title to this house or something. We, we write a lot of deeds um, pursuant to divorces, pursuant to estates, uh, adding family members, taking family members off. We see all permutations of deeds. Um, you, uh, you want to form an LLC to hold a piece of investment property. So you want to transfer the property into the LLC. We do that all the time. In those circumstances, you probably already have title insurance or it's just not part of the process. 
So who picks the title company and how do they decide among all of the title companies out there? Right. By law, it's written into the Maryland Association of Realtors contract. It's buyer's choice in Maryland, right? And that's something that we as an independent title company, that's one of our favorite laws because um, it's buyer's choice. Now, the, but the problem is how do you make those buyers aware that they have a choice because their realtor has guided them through this mm -hmm. excruciating, in, in some cases, process <laughs> of decision making. You're not wrong. <laughs> yeah, right? And so at the end of it, they've got a certain fatigue. Mm -hmm. They say, what title companies? I don't even know what that is. Right. What do you recommend, Leanne? Right. And, and sometimes when you get the, the estimates, they're not written exactly the same. It's hard to do side by side. Yeah, yeah it is because the settlement statement is a, a is a mass of, of figures and fees, and you're right. You're, you're, it's hard to compare apples to apples, but um, when your client or any of our buyers call us for a quote, Janice very professionally answers them and, and gives them some facts and figures. And uh, so if, you, if a buyer knows to do that, if they know that they can Google title companies Baltimore, for example, mm -hmm. Cotton Duck Title is probably gonna be the first uh, site that pops up and hopefully they'll drill down on our website and understand that uh, we're independent and somewhat interesting and <laughs> in a great neighborhood yes and it is nice to work with somebody that you know because when you're calling to get just confirmation of those wire instructions to prevent the fraud you know the person's voice on the phone that is really nice i think that's important and I think it's important to um, book a title company that has been around for 25 years because that says that we've survived a lot of market ups and downs. Remember 2008, for example, around this time, uh, 2008, the mortgage market was crashing and, uh, and those, those days were coming to an end where you could get a mortgage just by filling out an application yep. with no... No income verification, no... Who needs a job? Right. It's Remember fun. that? I mean, it's insane to think back on it. And it really tanked the economy for three or six months. But my point is, um, yeah, I think uh, long longevity in the industry is important. I think you should always consider what, uh, where's the property that I'm buying? Um, it always surprises me when somebody buys a house in Baltimore City and they settle it in Gaithersburg, you know, or... Um, you know, even Towson, it surprised me because each jurisdiction is very specific. Here comes another customer. Uh, every jurisdiction is specific and has quirks. And I think a buyer is best served to use a title company in the jurisdiction where they're buying. I think that makes sense because the records are a little bit different. You want somebody who, who knows what to look for, what might be missing. I yeah. think that makes a lot of sense. Do you have any personal war stories that you wanted to share? Or is that maybe confidential? <laughs> well, I will tell you that every, every recording, uh, every transfer with Baltimore City brings with it quirks and potential problems. The water department is always challenging. Classic. Um, you know, uh, the changeover from the tax year in June to July is fraught with problems concerning, you know, escrows and, and new tax bills. Um, we deal with a lot of investors who buy rough properties. So we're getting them out of tax sales. We're getting them out of receivership actions. We're paying off judgments. We're paying off ground liens. Um, we really have a specialty of um, dealing with difficult titles. So, uh, yeah, if you've got another three hours, we'll... Uh, <laughs> Tell you about a few but okay. in general they get through and um speaking of title insurance we have not had claims for failure to to do the job correctly uh so uh overall um overall we have these closings and it's smooth we, so you're an attorney too yeah. what other services do you offer I offer title abstracting services. What is that? That's where you actually go to the court records and look at the current deed of ownership and then construct a chain of title backwards in time, industry standard 
40 or 60 years. And when I started doing this, you actually had to still go to the courthouse <laughs> and hump these gigantic books <laughs> off the shelf, try to get them onto a copier that worked. Um, <laughs> And, uh, but, but it was a very valuable skill to learn, and I learned it during law school, and I was able to use that skill to set up my first office space here in Hamden, and um, we still do it. Mm -hmm. uh, we do it for our titles, for all the work we do around here for people. Um, the state of Maryland uses us for really difficult um, commercial titles and environmental uh, acquisitions like when the mm -hmm. state's acquiring more parkland or something we do mm -hmm. the titles we do a lot of titles for Baltimore City you know a lot of their roughest properties that they're trying to understand who <sighs> owns this vacant property we're right. really involved in that um, but then I also write deeds mm -hmm. of every shape and size <laughs> um, everything from divorce deeds deeds where you're maybe putting a property into an LLC mm -hmm. or a corporation. Family trust. Family trust is very popular. Um, taking people out of title, putting people into title, <laughs> family members, et cetera. Um, oh, um, newlyweds, adding a spouse. You know, yes. maybe you acquired a title yes. when you were young and single and now you're adding your spouse to title. So lots of deed work, some contract work. I like to let the professionals do most of the contract work, of course, but <laughs> when somebody has a for sale by owner or something um, where they haven't put it out to the retail market, they'll come in and ask us to get it in writing because that is essential when it comes to real estate transactions. Um, so we write a lot of contracts. I'll represent a buyer or a seller, as the case may be, um, when called upon, and then um, probate work. We write wills. We write powers of attorney and advance directives. And then at the end of that process, we also assist families in the probate uh, of wills, the probate process, which a lot of people are kind of frightened of. But um, we sit here and have those really hard discussions sometimes about um, what do you want to have happen? Exactly. Yeah. And, and what will happen if you don't Yes. Do a will if to address it. It's not set up exactly advance. right. Here is the downstream consequence of that. Yeah. Yeah. So those are pretty valuable uh, discussions to have, but they're difficult. Yeah. And people put those off. And they should not. Yeah. <laughs> so why pick the name Cotton Duck? Right. Cotton Duck is a reference to the industrial manufacturing that was going on in this neighborhood in the past, if you can believe it. I was, uh, I picked that name after learning that these factories along the Jones Falls River used to manufacture um, um, textiles, uh, heavy uh, canvas, heavy sailcloth, and um, one of the products was specifically called Cotton Duck. And there's Cotton Duck Mills referenced on the maps around here. <laughs> And uh, I thought it was an interesting name, and uh, it's, it's led to a lot of discussions. Mm -hmm. That same question comes yes. up almost all the time when we do a closing. So hopefully it's memorable, but it's also intended to reference what went on in these mills 100 mm -hmm. years ago. Well, I think given what you do for a living, it's hard not to get kind of steeped in the history of this area and all of the things that happened. I mean, you're, you're looking at records that... Yeah. You can see who owned it, what were the restrictions, and how, how did things happen? Uh, ground rent is something that Baltimore is famous for, but it just yeah. doesn't exist other places. Yeah. And so you get wrapped up and involved in, this is how people used to conduct their lives. Yeah. No, I couldn't agree more. We, we get the, the micro with each, each single property we do in Baltimore City, but the macro, the, the big picture of Baltimore City is it used to be manufacturing and, um, you know, it's been around for 200 some years. And so, yeah, the maps and a lot of the things in this uh, office are designed to um, build upon that knowledge. And um, I, what I like best is when we have somebody that settles a property here in Baltimore City, and I actually have a map from 1906 <laughs> to That's show your them. That's property. Yes, look, look what was surrounding you, you know, over 100 years ago. 
yeah, we have a lot of fun with the history of this neighborhood and the history of the city in general. I remember one of the closings that you did for me, uh, there was a, a railroad right of way that was attached to that property. There was kind of an extra parcel on the other side of, yeah. the, of the alley. And mm -hmm. I thought that that was really interesting. So anyway. Yeah. Uh, so why locate here in Hamden? Because I bought my first investment property in Hamden. <laughs> And I did that. I bought in Hamden because I, I knew I wanted to be jo by Johns Hopkins University. I thought that's a pretty safe bet. Um, and to have a couple, I wanted to have a couple rental units. So I looked in Charles Village, lovely neighborhood, but I could only afford Hamden at the time. Hamden was very inexpensive by comparison. So I got three units in Hamden. Um, I was able to live on the first floor and rent the top two floors covering all my debt service. That allowed me to go to law school, by the way. Um, some people call that house hacking. Yes, anyway, I'm very familiar. Uh, if you'd like some help with that, happy to help. I recommend it. Um, <laughs> so I was living on 33rd Street, go to uh, University of Baltimore Night Law School, um, and gradually got to know the merchants here on 36th Street, which at the time was kind of run down, a lot of vacancies, so very cheap. Um, and when I asked some of my favorite merchants up here, hey, you think uh, a law office could go around here? I said, oh yeah, Dan, yeah. Come on up, <laughs> sooner the better, right? Um, and so we found some really inexpensive space a couple blocks from here, set up our first office. And um, I just have enjoyed the neighborhood ever since. It's a great mix of, of everything. Um, and uh, it gets more interesting, I think, every year. So, um, we, we had that first office, we expanded in the building, we eventually bought that building a couple blocks from here. And uh, you know we've been part of the merchants group and the community council through the years. So um, there's a lot of reasons to like Hamden. Well, and you've been part of that renaissance. Uh, thanks, I'm not <laughs> sure about that, but we definitely have been around to, um, to see the neighborhood uh, become a lot more vibrant and uh, you know, there's so many good food and it's beverage. It's so hard to work here. It is. It's hard to get anything done. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, so um, lots, lots to do in Hamden. Um, I think it's conveniently located, mm -hmm. really, between north and south. Um, and so we've had a great experience with the new location, designing it the way we wanted to for maximum comfort. We've got some parking in the back. It's easy to park on the uh, in front of us here on the avenue uh, most of the time. So it is really beautiful. I remember getting a tour of your building and just being amazed. I think it's awesome. Thank you very much. Well, thank you so much for agreeing to this interview. I have had a great time. I hope you guys have learned a lot. This is Boots in Baltimore, Leanne Blanchard. And if you have any real estate services that you need, I highly recommend Dan and his team because they've been perfect every time we've used them. Thank you, Leanne. Thank you. <laughs>